So many thoughts were racing through my mind as I drove to the Daniels home. The Clarks, Adam, the children, Jess. Why was she able to wake up now? What changed? Did I do something? Hell, maybe the ghost let Jess go. Maybe she escaped. Why does this feel too easy? And why is it when you have somewhere to be, you hit every red light? It was like something was telling me to stay away. The moment I walked through the front door, I found Mr. Clark pointing a gun in my face. Jess wasn't awake. I was lured here, and I didn't need to guess why. I knew in my heart that this was my fault. We were all going to die. John, I know you've heard me tell this story a dozen times now, but the following drawings are Jess's account of the event. Although she was unconscious for the majority of the experience, Jess was incredibly accurate. John, I knew I only had one shot to survive this. I needed the children to remember. The children were in this house with the Clarks for years, and they never made contact. I needed the Clarks to confess, admit to the crime, and if my time being a therapist has taught me anything, people want to validate their actions. You just need to know how to ask.
The children ripped the Clarks apart, then dragged every piece back into the shadows. They left nothing, not even blood. After that, Jess woke up. The only thing left of the Clarks was their gun and a news story. No one will ever know what they did except us, and they will probably always be remembered as the kindly couple who owned the Burger Shack. But according to Jess, they got what they deserved. It's been two weeks since Jess woke up. Carol said things felt different in the home, brighter. She said it felt like a different house. Carol told me they were finally moving back to Houston. Jess had been in a great mood since, but she still has not said a word. Maybe the children took her voice with them. So how are you today? Are you looking forward to moving back to Houston? I'm sure he is, Jess. Your mom said you still aren't speaking. Have you given it a try? No. Jess just shrugged and smiled. Looks like I got my wish. I got a happy Jess after all. Have you seen Maya or the others? Free now. No, John. Her little voice was the sweetest sound I've ever heard. We spent the rest of the session playing old board games. We had a good time, and then after we said goodbye. Like I said, John, this would make one hell of a book, but I don't think it's a book I can write. At least not now. Maybe one day I'll come back to this case. Maybe. Besides, no one will ever believe it. I think it would be better to just let these children rest. Sorry to waste your time, John. We can talk it over when I come down for Thanksgiving. It's been 10 years since I've looked at these tapes. I thought about destroying them, but that doesn't feel right. I followed up on Carol, Dean, and Jess. Carol has a job in some accounting firm. She never remarried. Dean went to college. He's studying finance. Jess seems to be happy. She's about to graduate and move to New York for college. Carol says she doesn't remember Maya or the ghost children. Neither her or Dean ever bring it up. And maybe neither should I.